I'm Lisa Tyler. I'm the host of Senior Connections. And this is our monthly look at all kinds of issues in the Muskegon County area dealing with older adults and the people who care for them. Each month we have a different topic. It might range from prescription coverage to Medicare to services available in the community. And we hope that we're helping you navigate what can be a confusing web of services for all older adults in the area. So we want to help you try to figure out how to go to get the information, who to talk to. And today I'm very excited that I've got two special guests with us from the Alzheimer's Association. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple of really big, um, important events that they have coming up. So I think about every year in August, we try to have somebody on to talk about the Alzheimer's Research Night on August 22nd and the Walk to End Alzheimer's, which comes in September. So today with me are Tim Breed and Aaron Murphy from the Alzheimer's Association. And welcome. Yeah. I'm very happy to have you here. I know that, Tim, you've been on before. Yes. Aaron, I'm not sure whether I've had you. This is my first time. So first time for you, second time for you. So, but it's been a year, Tim, I think exactly, <laughs> pretty much exactly yeah. since we started. So let's just talk a little bit about your background, what, what you've done before you came to the Alzheimer's Association sure. and what you do there now. Sure. Well, thank you. Lisa, we, we just love being here and the opportunity to talk about the events that are coming up. Um, on behalf of the Alzheimer's Association. Um, for me personally, I've been a part of uh, Muskegon life uh, for a good many years. We go back, mm -hmm. we have a bit of a history there, yeah. and that's a good <laughs> About history. About 1990? Yes. <laughs> Ooh, dating when we were babies. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Teenagers, fresh yes. out of school. Um, and in my roles, uh, various roles in Muskegon, I've worked primarily within the nonprofit sector, a lot in the hospital settings, mm -hmm. communication, public relations, community outreach. And uh, that was a very nice way to kind of lead into my current role with the Alzheimer's Association. Um, I'm a community engagement manager. Um, I wear a couple of different hats under that title. Um, the first one being to, to make sure that we're providing some educational uh, programs in the community. And we present a variety of different topics, um, all related to Alzheimer's disease. But they range all the way from helping people understand early signs and symptoms to then maybe for those folks who are starting to move through uh, the disease process, what communication looks like at different stages. We also have programs that touch on some of the more familiar behaviors that might manifest as some, somebody's getting a little later in the disease of wandering or repetitiveness or aggressiveness. So community education is a part of what I do. Um, I also wear uh, the hat of volunteer recruiter and trainer <laughs> and orienter and <laughs> placement. And, and so we're always looking for volunteers to, to join up with the association. And we have a variety of roles. Um, the community education part is one, where we would prepare a volunteer to go out and actually do the types of programming that I'm doing. We also look for individuals to serve as our community representatives. And they might just be at an information table, um, at a health fair, just, just being in the public space to kind of remind people and bring material um, that we have. We look for faith-based volunteers. It might be a member of a house of worship who um, is just interested in kind of being our eyes and ears in that particular mm. space. Uh, we don't ask them to do presentations necessarily, but we want them to be a source of referral. So if they're sitting next to somebody in the pew and, and they realize that maybe a family is struggling with mm -hmm. somebody with dementia, that they would refer them to the information that we have in our office. So you've got a really great variety of roles. Yeah. You think about the education, the first one you said, it takes a special kind of, you and I have done public speaking and things for a really, for a year or two. Um, we've done that for a while. And I have so many people who say, I could never do what you do. And growing up, I never thought I could do that either. But that does take a special kind of person who is willing to get up in front of people that they don't know and talk. And then a little less so to work at a fair and hand out information. I can yep. probably do that if I feel I've been educated. But the church, the, the, the faith-based role is one I hadn't heard of. Yes. That's something almost anybody could do. Anybody, anybody who just has a passion and is willing to learn a little bit and just be a connector is that's really exactly, what they're doing. That's exactly what we would like them to do. Just, just to, to kind of be aware of those that are around. If there's anybody struggling, do they, they see somebody within their house of, house of worship that you know, are showing perhaps some of those early signs mm -hmm. and symptoms. And, and, you know, if you're sitting next to someone, um, you know, on a regular basis, you might feel a little more comfortable saying, you know, or, I know where you could get some information, or mm -hmm. I know who might be able to provide you with a few answers about what happens, you know, what's going on. But they can be helpful so. with the pastoral care as well that happens because a lot of times people 
might not take it as well from one of us sitting there, right. but from their pastor or their worship leader, they may, yeah. so they can be an informational yeah. source. So, boy, my head's already <laughs> dreaming with ideas of people, of ways to help you make some of those connections, but we'll right. talk about that more later. So, Aaron, let's hear the same from you, your background and, and how long you've been with Alzheimer's Association and how you came to be there. Yeah, absolutely. So, I'm coming up on a year with the association. I started last August. Um, this is my first job right out of college. I graduated from Hope College in 2018. <gasps> That's where my so, going. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Just a few days. It's wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, so, yeah, so I graduated from there and then made the move and started working here last August. Um, my role is a special events coordinator, so I manage two walks. I manage the Muskegon Walk as well as the Mason County Ludington Walk. And I also help with a fundraising initiative called The Longest Day, which is more of a do-it-yourself fundraiser, turning anything that you loved or something that your loved one who passed away from Alzheimer's disease, something that they loved, turning it into a fundraiser, um, and just kind of going from there. And it all circles around the longest day of the year, which is um, the summer solstice in June. So um, we're kind of winding down on that and ramping up for the walk season coming up here in September. So. Um, anything having to do with money and fundraising and helping to find a cure and treatment, absolutely. So, so what, what got you interested in the Alzheimer's Association out of college? What was your degree and then your interest? Yeah, absolutely. So I studied communication and business in college and just kind of got involved in a couple different nonprofit organizations that I had internships at, um, that I worked for kind of recreationally with, you know, extracurricularly, I guess. Um, and so I got involved in that and then I had a personal connection to Alzheimer's disease as well too. My father on my dad's side of the family passed away when I was in middle school from the disease. So obviously it was something that I had a personal connection to. I had seen a little bit of the effects that that had had and then obviously the effects that it had on the rest of my family being caregivers as well. So um, it definitely created a passion in me that I wanted to do my part to help find the first survivor of it. So Excellent. Yeah. Well, we'll get there eventually. Absolutely. Right? All right, so let's talk a little bit about Alzheimer's disease and what it is. So um, statistics I've read, more than 5 million Americans live with Alzheimer's, um, and we know that that's increasing, right? Because I remember, and this may be an old statistic, I remember from a year ago, though, somebody in the United States develops Alzheimer's just about every minute, mm -hmm. like 66 seconds. Right. So has the number changed? What are we seeing? Well, we're, we're seeing what the experts had predicted, which is those numbers are on the rise. Um, Currently, the estimate is about 5.8 million individuals um, in the United States that are diagnosed with Alzheimer's. In the state of Michigan, the number has climbed to roughly 190,000 individuals that are affected. And that number is expected over the next six years to climb to about 220,000. And you may wonder why, why is this number climbing and climbing so rapidly? And, and um, there, there are two things at play. One is kind of good and one is not so good. First of all, there is an older generation that is living longer. That's good, because the alternative isn't so good. Right. Um, so it's good that, that we're living longer. But then there is this large group of us, myself included, that are the baby boomers. And there's a huge population, and we're all living to an older age. Mm -hmm. Well, age happens to be the largest risk factor for developing the disease. So if you've got this large population that is living longer, which again is the good thing, um, you're going to find more and more individuals developing Alzheimer's disease or some other condition that's going to, to uh, manifest some dementia of some type. And so state of Michigan, again, in the next six years, expected to get up to close to a quarter of a million people, um, which is kind of a staggering number. And those are just the individuals that are affected by the disease. You then have the caregivers. And you've got the professional community. Um, we, we really don't have the facilities. We, we don't have the staff. Um, we don't have caregivers. We don't have the Paid caregivers. Paid or unpaid. <laughs> Paid or unpaid. And, you know, it, it is, and I want to go back to something that Aaron said about the longest day. Um, you know, that was very intentional for the association to pick the summer solstice as the longest day because if you are caring for someone with the disease or you yourself have something causing dementia, every day can feel like the longest day. Mm -hmm. and, and it begins to wear individuals down, those with the disease and the caregivers. And so it's so important to be able to, to kind of use those points in time to kind of raise the, the awareness level of how prevalent the disease is. It isn't going away anytime soon. There are hundreds of millions of dollars that are being um, donated in terms of unpaid care 
the family members, the friends, the church community, the community as a whole. And then there is the entire paid um, portion of, of the community that's stepping up in terms of long-term care facilities and memory units. Um, but it is a disease that is impacting a lot of people. It's going to impact a lot more. The unfortunate news is there, there is not um, anything right now available that is either an effective treatment to prevent it or to slow down its progression or to cure an individual. Um, we'll talk about the, the research net coming up, um, but it's so important then that, that the effort be made to fund the research that's going out mm -hmm. there to try to get ahead of this uh, disease. So are there, so age is the top risk factor, Correct. as you said. Are there other risk factors yes. that have been identified? What are some yeah. of those major ones? You know, um, genetics, family history. If you have a sibling or a parent who has had Alzheimer's di disease, mm -hmm. your risk is increased slightly. Now, I want to caveat all this by saying, just because you might be at higher risk does not mean you're going right. to develop the disease. And growing and, older does not mean you will develop correct, the disease. Correct. It, absolutely. So there are just some populations that have a higher risk factor. And those that have had a parent or a sibling with the disease, the risk factor is a little bit higher. Age, we mentioned, is higher. There is a genetic component that if you have a certain type of gene, it puts you at a higher risk. And if you were to go through genetic counseling, that might be the kind of thing. If you wanted to know ahead of time, you could find out. There are populations, um, uh, ethnic populations, that are affected. African Americans, twice as likely than their white counterparts to develop the disease. Um, Hispanic Americans, about one and a half times more likely. Hmm. And, and yeah, it begs the question, no. why? They haven't those figured out no. why yet, though, no. have they? No. That's the thing. It's so, um, it's so negatively impacting so many people, but it's, it's just so broad. I mean, because Alzheimer's is one, the largest Correct. kind of dementia, right. but Correct. you know, 60 to 80% of that. But still, it, it, right. the brain is such a, I have a son studying neuroscience, so the brain Perfect. is so complex yeah. that I know they've made huge strides in understanding things, but still there's so much more yeah. to learn. We seem to know more about the effects of the disease and how it affects the individual than we know about its origin. Then we, we certainly don't, we haven't unlocked the keys as to how to keep it from progressing. Mm -hmm. And with each individual, um, as we all are individuals, uh, the disease progresses differently. And, and I think we all know individuals who may have been diagnosed and then two years, three years, five years later, you only see some of the early, maybe minor signs of it mm -hmm. showing up. Other individuals are diagnosed, uh, diagnosed, and within a year, you see significant changes in, in their um, And you just life. can't predict how Correct. that's going to happen. Correct. Yeah. So um, you said there's not really any treatments that are no. found to be effective at no. all. So there are medications on the market, um, in, and they, they basically help to boost memory. Memory is created uh, using the chemicals in the brain, and there are medications that kind of can, can boost, no different than taking maybe an antibiotic to boost your immune system. There are medications on the market that will help to kind of boost the brain's ability to function. Doesn't touch the disease, mm -hmm. doesn't stop the progression. It's only making use of the chemicals that are still there and the parts of the brain that are not affected mm -hmm. to kind of help with alertness and memory and a few of those things. But, and that's not to discourage people from exploring those because I would say anything that helps to improve quality of life, helps boost memory, Right. Talk so there with, are talk some the doctor. So there are some things out there that may help may help with that. Correct. But people just need to be aware they're not cures. They're not going to stave it up. They're not exactly. even necessarily going to prolong. Exactly. It's just going to maximize what you've got. It's a perfect because way to put it. When, you know, and we haven't really ever talked on the show about dementia friends, which you and mm -hmm. I have been through well, I, yep. I facilitate, but when I think about the picture of the brain and how much is lost through yeah. all kinds of dementia, but there's still a lot there. So what those are doing is taking yep. what's left there and, and boosting that a little bit. So, Correct. Um, so we'll come back and talk some more about that if we've got some hot time, but we are in August. Yeah. Um, and so I want to talk about Aaron. Let's give, especially if it's your first time on, let's talk about these <laughs> events we have coming Absolutely. up. So, I, and I don't know how much you are involved with the um, research night, but that comes up on August 22nd. Um, and we've done this for at least the last few years at Tanglewood Park where Senior Resources is located. And let's talk about that. 
Absolutely, yeah, and I will say Tim has done an excellent job in planning this event this year. Um, so yeah, it's going to be on August 22nd at Tanglewood Park. Um, we're going to have Dr. Bruno Giordani, excuse me, of the Michigan Alzheimer's Disease Center. He's going to be giving a presentation explaining some of the logistics and a little bit of what is Alzheimer's disease, what does it actually look like on a medical standpoint in the brain, um, and then talking about some of those prevention and treatment methods that are being researched right now, some of the studies that are out there, and some of the science behind all of that and so this is open to the public correct and there's yep. no cost yep absolutely and it's at 6 p.m. right we Second will actually or? begin uh, inviting people to come in at 530 okay. for uh, registration and for those that are pre-registered who have called our toll-free number um, or some other method of, of pre-registering there will be uh, a nice boxed meal mm -hmm. um, and I do want to take a quick minute here to give a shout out to Senior Resources for being one of our sponsors of the event also AgeWell Services and Life Circles Pace. We, we could not make this happen without those well, organizations. Well we're all pretty, pretty darn so. passionate about this and it's a great collaborative and of course we're the three in the Tanglewood Park building yep. right across the street from where you are now yep. mm -hmm. but it's really great because Life Circles has hosted it for at least this let's see I've at least this is the at least the third year yeah. if not the fourth year of it yeah. age well provides the meal senior yes. resources provides the funding so if you come you yes. get a wonderful little box meal and I've done it for a few years um, what I love about it is I, I always just call him dr. Bruno because yeah. I can't the last name yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he he doesn't talk in in medical speak no. he talks in real language and I think people come year after year because he's also has always just come back from the Alzheim National Alzheimer's Correct. Association conference, right? Yep. With about research, so he's coming and literally bringing us real cutting edge, like right. less than a month old news right. usually. Yeah, and so, me. how do how do people can they still sign up? Absolutely, yes. I, I would suggest probably the easiest way is to call our toll free number. The, you know, you want to give us that? Yes, I will. As soon as I put my glasses on, <laughs> it's the 800-272-3900. Okay. So um, that, or they can also go to you know, alz.org. That's the main website. It takes a little navigating from yeah. there. So I think toll-free number is a little mm -hmm. easier way to cut through. But you know, all we ask for is their basic contact information. They will be put on the registration sheet, and as long as we have at least a few days lead time or more, if we can get it, um, we will make sure that there's a small box meal. Okay. For them. Great. And what do you hope that they take away from that event? Well, there are a, a couple of things um, that, that I think are a real benefit to doing the research night. You know, one is to hear, as you had said, kind of the, the latest news that comes not only from the international research that's going on, but Bruno himself is from a research facility in Ann Arbor, so there is research going on in our own backyard, so to speak. Um, so getting an idea of what is being worked on in different locations throughout the country. That's good to know. I think part of what he will be sharing, and I won't spoil his presentation, but there, there is a lot of work being done, as there has been for a long time, on uh, prevention and cure, but, but there's also equal emphasis on detection, because it's just as important to know how to detect it and how early we can detect mm -hmm. it. The earlier it can be detected, the longer the window of time to do some interventions. Right. So he will, I'm sure, touch on that. So understanding what's happening on that research field, um, he offers um, a wonderful Q&A, question and answer at the end. And he is open to any and every question. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't think I've seen one that stumped him yet. But, um, <laughs> maybe this year. Um, but he, as you said earlier, he's, he's so down to earth that you can ask anything in layman's language. Mm -hmm. and, and he is glad to entertain that question. And the final thing is, just looking around the room, I think it gets it gives a sense of reassurance that I'm not the only one with questions. I'm mm -hmm. not the only one who's concerned about a loved one. There's a room full of people mm -hmm. that are probably there because they're taking care of someone mm -hmm. or they themselves are worried about themselves. And I know I've been there with people who either have had a family member and they're worried about the genetic part of it. So a lot of times that's what mm -hmm. those questions come from. Grandma had this. Does that mean I'm likely mm -hmm. to? Um, and that's an understandable fear. And you're right. He's, he's very great about um, answering those questions yeah. and trying to yeah. alleviate those fears a little bit yeah. of course because none of us know that's what right. that's going to be but um, I would really encourage you to try to to call um, the 800 number we'll give it again at the end of the show but it's a really great event you've had usually a hundred people or mm -hmm. more who come to that the rooms full 
And you can also get some good information on some other agencies yes, um, at that. So then let's talk, Aaron, about the next big event, the one that you spend a lot of time on, the Walk to End Alzheimer's. I'm going to give a quick little plug. Senior Resources has had a team in this for many years. Oh, yeah. We are very competitive. <laughs> <laughs> we expect to be. We will not. We know the one or two teams that are always really up there with the fundraising, but we are usually in the top five in the area. We have a very big competition with our friends at Life Circles Pace. Ah. I think we're even having Penny Wars this year or something. But <laughs> talk about that. It's coming up when and where and how long has it been here? Give us all the good information about that. Yeah, absolutely. So the walk itself this year is going to be on Saturday, September 21st at Heritage Landing. Um, this is the, I think we're going into the 18th year now that we've done the walk. It started in 2001. So it's been a kind of a staple of the Muskegon community and something that we've been able to see grow over the last several years, which has been really exciting. Last year we raised about sixty-six, sixty-seven thousand wow. dollars as a Muskegon community. Yeah, so um, just similar to how you were saying being competitive, we're always in competition with ourselves, especially mm -hmm. in something like fundraising. And so um, we're setting a goal of raising seventy-five thousand okay. dollars as a community this year, and we're well on our way. We're about forty percent of the way there already, and we're still about a month out. Um, and so a lot of the funds come in last, you know, in that time frame too. So I know we don't report ours because we don't want to tip our hand. Absolutely. So last minute we come in with okay. Absolutely. So How many walkers are there usually? So last year we had about 400 to 450. So we're looking to have about the same, maybe hopefully a little bit more. And this so one year. of the things that I love about this, even though I've been trying to work on better health for the couple of years, but it's not a, it's not. You're not doing a 5K run. This right. isn't a run. This is a walk, and it's downtown, and we leave Heritage Landing, and we walk down Western, right? Right, right, Western. Yeah. Um, and we kind of walk down to about the farmer's market, as right. I recall, and loop around there. So you get to look at the shops. You could stop if you wanted. It's very casual and yeah. just nice and friendly. Absolutely, right? and that's something, and that's something that's been a huge priority of ours is we want everyone to feel welcome. Um, people who have Alzheimer's disease, people who are caregivers, kids, adults, um, dogs are allowed at the event too. Say, so I've seen strollers available. and dogs and wheelchairs. <laughs> yes, and absolutely. And really what we like to think of the walks as of our, oh my goodness, I'm getting tangled over my <laughs> words. Um, we love to think of them as a big um, support group. So we have a lot of people there that are present that just get to share their stories, mm -hmm. get to meet other people who are going through similar things, kind of like what you were sharing about earlier, Tim. Um, and it's really a beautiful way to build connections and just to kind of have everyone come together, whether you have a direct connection in your family or not, and to say we are fighting to see a world with an, without Alzheimer's and we are fighting to see that first survivor who, as the Alzheimer's Association, we believe has already been born um, and is out there. And so it's just a matter of finding them and um, continuing to fund that research and those treatments too. Well, hopefully we find them soon. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we all get, as I recall, we get kind of a windmill kind of flower yep. and they all represent different, I, I can't remember what all the different colors are, but yeah. I know I have a yellow one by my flagpole with my friend Arlene's name on oh. it that I okay. did one year didn't plant it in the little garden that you yeah. do. But, <laughs> um, you so do you want to touch on those? The different yeah, colors? what's the significance yes, of the colors? Absolutely. So people so will see that when they're mm -hmm. there. They'll see quite a few. Yeah, so part of that is um, we do have, it's called the Promise Garden. And mm -hmm. so we have a Promise Garden ceremony leading into the walk. So everyone who comes gets a specific colored flower based on your relationship to the disease. So purple is having lost someone to the disease. Blue is having the disease. Orange is um, being a caregiver. No, yellow is a caregiver, I believe. Does that figure description? Yellow is or yellow is somebody. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then orange is not having a connection but wanting to see an end right. to the disease. Um, and so everyone has this, and we have this really beautiful time where everyone who has that specific relationship gets to lift up their flower, and eventually we see the full um, spectrum of the garden, and then we have now a white flower um, representing that first survivor. And mm -hmm. we don't have any white flowers in the garden yet, but we're hoping to see that right. um, one day more and more white flowers pop up at this event. So. It's always really fun. It's lively. Yeah. Um, you've got music. We've done like some little stretching, really fun, lively stretches mm -hmm. or Zumba kind of things to mm -hmm. get us going. Even though it's a casual walk, we still want to make sure that we're all stretched out for all of that. Um, anything else we need to know about that? Uh, Do people need to register for that ahead of time? Yes. So, well, not ahead of time. So okay. you can either register online um, at actact.alz.org slash Muskegon. Um, you can register online that way. We also allow people to register the day of and just come out that morning, sign up then. Um, it's completely free to register and participate in the event. Um, it is a fundraising event, so a lot of people will share on social media, ask their friends and family to, for donations, that sort of thing. 
Um, but it's, again, free to everybody to come on out. We'll they have don't have to fundraise. Correct. We encourage fundraising. Right. And if you um, raise $100, you get a T-shirt. You I do. Believe, you right? do get Just a like fun, special fabulous. purple T-shirt yeah. similar to the one I'm wearing, yes. Mm -hmm. um, what a coincidence. I know, I know. Uh, almost like I planned it. But, yeah, and then we also, at the event, we'll have some snacks, some food. We'll have um, a balloon artist this year that will be making the Promise Garden flowers, actually, out of balloons cool. if people want to take those. Um, we've got some fun little things in store. So There's usually That's some fun. photo opportunities and fun Absolutely. things. Absolutely. We always, we always make sure we get Don't our Don't forget team. to mention Andy. Oh, yes, and Andy O'Reilly is going to be serving as our honorary chair this year from Positively Muskegon and Muskegon Channel Radio. Oh, that's a perfect. I know that he's already done some yeah. stories on that, and he's a perfect ambassador for Absolutely. all kinds of things. So, well, they just told me we only have about five minutes left, so we're going <laughs> to switch from those two important events. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. try to remember August 22nd and mm -hmm. September 21st. One's a Thursday night, one's a Saturday. Um, let's talk a little bit, Tim, um, real briefly about senior millage um, and yes. funding because that helps fund your position and what it kind does. of things you're doing with we, that. You know, we've been so fortunate um, that we are in our second year of funding through the Muskegon County Senior Millage, which I'm a senior, and I'm, well, I say I'm a senior, but also a county resident, so it's something <laughs> right. that I pay into as well. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's always nice to be able to see those dollars invest and come back into the community. Um, a lot of my work in community education has been underwritten by the, uh, those dollars from the Senior Millage. Uh, we've been able to, to reach different parts of Muskegon County. We've got some areas that we've not been able to get into yet, um, but we continue to look for those opportunities. But we have been in a variety of different churches, um, libraries that we've been in, uh, some businesses that have stepped oh, up to great. say, can you come in and do a lunch and learn for us? And, and so, again, it's, it's all about, and these are all free. These are all free. Our programs run roughly 45 to 50 minutes on a variety of topics, and we just try to leave the audience with, again, a little bit more knowledge about the disease, and then also that, that sense that there's a lot of us in the same boat, and, and that nobody is alone, and, and nobody should feel that they are on their own and alone and taking care of someone or taking care of themselves. Great. So I'm going to give a real quick little plug since you talked about the senior millage and all of that because I don't know that we'll have our show on before that. On Friday, September 13th, there is planned to be a senior millage open house that will allow from 10 a.m. till noon for people to come to Forest Park Covenant Church on Henry Street in Norton Shores and learn about the many services, including the Alzheimer's Association and everything else that is funded by the Senior Millage, a great opportunity to get information on that. And you can find that information on our website. Alzheimer's Association has so many great things. These events, Tim and his speaking and things. And then you've also, you've got a lot of those education sessions. You've got support groups, um, all kinds of opportunities for people to learn. So I'm gonna give a couple of, um, in the last minute or two, a couple of ways that you can get information on that. Um, that. One of the best ways to make sure that the phone is answered, because these two are out doing things all the time, so they may or may not be in the office. And there's a small, there's not many more people besides you two. Right, right, that right now, the two Pretty much. Yep. <laughs> it is. Well, this is your Muskegon chat. So if you're calling right now, we're not, we're right not there. there. <laughs> um, but you can call 800-272-3900, 800-272-3900. Um, the toll-free number so it doesn't cost you anything and then you let them know in Muskegon and they will help connect you and get you the information you need. So you can get information on caregiver support. You can say, I want to find out more about, I want Tim to come and talk to my church or my workplace and all kinds of things that we can do and almost everything they do is free. Really, there's not cost no, for anything there, that I can think of. Doesn't. No, no, nothing at all. So try to remember that again. Um, they also have a great website, www.alz.org. Again, 1-800-272-3900. And if you can't remember any of that, always 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you can call 211 and tell them what you're looking for and they will get that information. So in our last few seconds, Tim, Aaron, thank you so much. Well, this half hour just us. blew by. Right. Um, so much great information. We will look forward to I know I am doing the walk. I will see you also at the research night Wonderful. for some of that. So we hope that we'll see you at some of those events. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll talk to you next month. Have a great day.